Hi there, my name is Matti Sulanto and in this video I'm gonna be doing some urban nighttime photography handheld and I'm also going to tell you how to do it and why it's useful in some situations. But before I take any pictures, please consider subscribing to my channel and tap the bell icon down there so you won't miss any of my future videos and I'll publish two videos each week. I was going to make a video of this topic earlier, but my good friend Robin Wong was faster and he already made two videos touching the same topic. And his latest vi uh, topic was, hold on, um, uh, ISO 200, ISO 200 handheld night photography challenge and um, I figured now that I'm also in KL which is Robin's like hometown I might as well take the challenge and uh, it's even more kind of fun that Robin himself is behind the video camera and he's kind of supervising how I'm doing with the challenge And here are my observations and tips for handheld night photography in urban environment. Let's first talk about my gear of choice today. I'm using a Micro Four Thirds camera similar to what Robin used, but mine is a Lumix of course. I chose the Lumix G90 this time and uh, my lens is uh, the 15mm f1.7 Panasonic Leica. And the reason I chose this combination is that it's very light and compact and the optical quality of the lens is really really good. I can shoot wide open without any problems and the IBIS inside the camera is really good so I can use long handheld shutter speeds. But of course you can pretty much use any kind of camera in this kind of photography but you're gonna need some sort of image stabilizer. I think that's necessary. And now let's talk a bit about the settings I'm using uh, here. I'm going to stay, of course, at the base ISO 200 because that's part of uh, Robin's challenge. And then I'll just adjust the shutter speed and aperture to get the optimal exposure. And I'm not too worried about the shutter speed because the IBIS lets me shoot as long as one second or even longer exposures handheld and still get uh, a sharp result and I don't have to worry about the camera shake and now I think it's uh, a good time to check out some also some pictures that I shot it's very important to get your exposure correct and uh, the first uh, like rule or tip is to shoot raw. And uh, the second uh, important thing when it comes to exposure is not to blow out any highlights. I mean, it's okay to blow out small point lights or small light sources, like maybe street lights or something like that. But if you have a larger bright areas in the image, it's um, good to have some detail in them because it's not gonna look good if there are, if there are large areas that are totally blown out without any detail. It's very important and also helpful to know your camera's uh, properties and capabilities so you can make the correct exposure. And here's one example I shot the other night. This one is straight out of camera and as you can see the highlights are blown out. And here's the same picture after some minor post-processing. I pulled down the highlights and lifted the shadows just a bit. And as you can see, there now there's uh, some nice detail also in the highlights. And I knew my camera's properties and uh, capabilities, so I knew how to expose it. And um, uh, I knew that I can pull down the highlights enough in post. And now is a good time to check out another set of uh, pictures that I shot.
Underexposure is always bad on any camera, but some cameras can handle it better than others. But my advice is always try to get the optimal exposure for your camera. And uh, the only way to learn what is the optimal exposure is uh, to practice a lot and get to know your camera properly. And when you actually go out and start shooting, you realize that it's not so dark in a big city ever. And um, it's important to find out uh, light and shadow compositions. Those play a, a much like a bigger role than uh, in daylight uh, shooting situations. Because some of the detail you see during the daylight is not visible uh, in the evening or in the, uh, in the night. And I have one more set of pictures for you guys and we can check them right now. Of course, there are no rules that apply to every situation. And I think it's also important to experiment, uh, try longer shutter speeds, try camera shake, try out of focus, blurry pictures or whatever. I think it's important also to experiment a little bit. This kind of photography was not really possible in the film era. But today's uh, digital cameras, even phones, they have a lot of or many useful features uh, that make this kind of photography really possible. This kind of uh, night photography without a tripod is especially handy if you are traveling like me right now. You may not have enough room in your luggage for a tripod and even if you had, you may not want to carry your tripod all the time with you when you go out in the evenings. But what about you guys? Have you ever tried this challenge or something similar? If you have, please let me know in the comments down below how it all went. And we are now wrapping this up and trying to find some overpriced coffee for Robin behind the camera because Robin is running on overpriced coffee. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.